Today, let's make tube socks without a river using a single bed machine. These are the socks that we will make. They are very, very similar to the ones we made actually knitting tubular. They employ the same yarn combination. This is one strand of tam three ply astrakrill and one strand of skinny cotton lycra yarn run along with it. Similar acrylic yarns may be used and you can use any run along that is thin and stretchy and will pull the fabric in. Knitting the man's socks on the pass up, I used stitch size seven to get seven stitches per inch. I got the same gauge at stitch size eight on the Studio SK740. Strive for that gauge when the work comes off the machine and relaxes a minute. Washing will pull it in further. Before we begin, let's review something important. In this setting, the two hash marks, the machine will knit back from hold. In this setting, it will leave the stitches in hold if you pull the needles all the way forward. On a brother, N will knit them back from hold, H will leave them in hold. The size we're knitting today fits small to medium ladies' feet. You're looking at it on a size six and a half foot. Bring forward 56 needles and cast on by e-wrapping. I've got the yarn doubled up at the beginning, which automatically weaves in the yarn tail. Just a handy little trick. On this particular machine, I always push the needles into hold and knit back from hold using the correct setting on the carriage that we already talked about for the first three rows. And that always keeps me from having any problem knitting from the cast on. Knit a total of 24 rows following the cast on, then hang the e-wraps to close the top hem. If you'd prefer to use ribbing and have a ribber available, you may use it and still follow the pattern. Once every e-wrap is hung, the hem is complete. I find that the pairs of stitches that are on each needle knit off most neatly if I again knit back from hold. The sample sock is 110 rows after the hem is completed and before the toe shaping. You may add or subtract rows if you prefer. On the side of the bed away from the carriage, place half of the needles and hold. That's 28 needles. And we will knit the first part of the toe on the remaining needle. On the 38 needles that are still in work, decrease one on each side before beginning to knit, then knit two rows. It can be helpful to hang a claw weight on the existing fabric near the held needles. I did not find that I needed to this time, but sometimes it does help. Continue decreasing one on each side and knitting two rows. Here I used the simple decreases and it worked out fine, but a full fashion decrease also would. Continue with decreasing knitting two rows until 10 stitches remain, and then bind off those 10 stitches using any method that you like. On this machine, I like to bind off around the gate pegs. If you don't know how, I do have a whole video on that subject. Every time it's time to break the yarn, leave a good tail, about 20 inches, and that way it can help with the um, seaming eventually and make less to weave in. And just lift the toe off of the machine, go to the other side, and make another toe in the same manner. Decrease one on each side, knit two rows, and repeat until we're down to 10 stitches for this portion of the toe. It may help to hang a claw weight on the rest of the fabric to keep the knitting behaving nicely. Bind off the second tip of the toe. That's it for the knitting, easy, huh? Then we will align the edges of the toe shaping seam from the diagonal across the end of the toe, the second diagonal, and then up the entire length of the leg. As you probably know, alternate rows produce tight little knotted seaming stitches on the edges and larger strands of yarn, which are bars. What I've had success in doing to make things simple and still a neat flat seam is sew together both knots and bars up the diagonals, so across every bound off stitch on the end of the toe, and then up the 
long seam sew the knots together with whip stitches in every case. The Bickford seam also works well. It's just a little bit more complicated and I find this one does the job, but do whatever seam works well for you. Before washing, the tube will be about four inches across, making it eight inches in circumference. It will draw in some more after washing. Use hot soapy water because the combination of all of those factors activates the lycra. These are quite a good fit, but if you take a close look at the fabric, you'll see why that's working. On the dimension marked by the ruler, the fabric is substantially more stretched out than it is across the toe, for example. That's how tube socks of all kinds fit, and it's the reason that the qualities of the fabric are so important. We need to have sufficient fabric to do that and still be comfortable and yet have it pull in at the ankle and the instep. I confess that I've gone a little crazy with sock patterns because I really like knitting them and creating them once I found out what a fantastic fit you can get. If you find that you're crazy that way too, here are some of the books available. Socks of All Sorts, Volumes 1, 2, and 3 cover a wide variety of styles, sizes, and gauges, and Volume 3 includes boot toppers and some crazy leg warmers. Heavenly Heels is a design inspired by, but not copying, a hand-knitted style of heel in every size and many gauges. Sockinations is one classic style with oodles and oodles of sizes and gauges to save you from doing the math. Happy Hobby Socks is specifically for mid-gauge and bulky plastic hobby machines. All those already mentioned are sold on my website, but these Easy as Pie Socks are sold on Ravelry. It's the same style as in the Easy as Pie video, but given in many more sizes.